Hello, everybody. Um, I am so excited to release this conversation that I had with cartoonist Lily Harris. Um, a few weeks ago, Seven Days Newspaper, which is a local independent newspaper here in the state of Vermont, they reached out to me wanting to be in conversation about this moment and what is happening in the world. Um, but instead of them interviewing me, I propose that I interview someone else. So I'm, I interviewed Lily Harris, who is a brilliant, bold, creative cartoonist living here in the state of Vermont. Um, the conversation was so much fun to have and one of the most fascinating, interesting conversations that I've had in a long time. So I hope you enjoy. Lily, how about you introduce yourself and uh, tell people about your work? So my name is Lily J. Harris. Like Jarvis says, I just moved to White River about a year ago. I was studying cartooning at the Center for Cartoon Studies. I've been doing like commission editorial illustrations for a couple of years. I'm just getting to like sequential art. And what I love the most about what I do with my art is welcoming in different kinds of themes of tension. So tension can be in terms of like comedic tension or it can be horror or it could just be like trying to dismantle something. It's all a, a thing of being a thrill and tension. So that's what I try to implement. Um, yeah, and I'm from, originally from Maryland. That's all I got. <laughs> Wait, we're in Maryland. Southern Maryland. Okay. And I always uh, quantify where that is by saying uh, it's Clinton, Maryland. It's about two hours from Baltimore, about 90 minutes from Annapolis. So I try to place it by places people might have heard of. Okay. No one has ever been. Okay. Yeah, that kind of reminds me. I lived in Seattle for a mm -hmm. little bit, but the town that I lived in before I actually was living in Seattle was Olympia. <laughs> oh no, yeah, I got friends up there. Yeah, so it was like an hour from Seattle, but I'm like, no one will know what Olympia exactly. is, although it is the capital of Exactly, it's a lot of state. queer punks in Olympia. Exactly. Like basically what Olympia is exactly. now. <laughs> um, so you, um, you're a cartoonist. I find that to be very fascinating. Um, I, since living here, I've been sort of engaging with like the cartoon school and the cartoon school has like, hosted us um, for rehearsals, um, as well as like, you know, sharing about our work and talking about our work. It's a really beautiful, beautiful campus and a beautiful building. Um, but I have to be honest that I haven't really met any, um, until moving here, I had never met any black yeah. cartoonists. Yeah. So I'm really interested in talking about actually like what that is, like what, like, mm -hmm. what does it mean to be a cartoonist? How did you discover it and find it, um, or how did it find you? So when I first moved here, there was a cartoonist here named Robin Smith. Robin yes. With a y. Yes, Robin. Yes. Uh, her book, I think, Yubi, is coming out. It's very exciting. Um, and I saw her, and she was like, oh, yeah, I was the first Black woman to graduate from CCS. So I'm thinking, oh, my God, when did you come here? Like, 2006, 2007? She's like, 2017 is when I graduated. So... Yeah. I did not know that she was the, she was the first, first black woman to graduate from CCS. So, and she told me that, you know, to be like, you got it, you're fine, you're good, but just know if you need help. So I think. And CCS stands for? Center for Cartoon Studies. Center yeah. for Cartoon Studies. Yeah, so I think there's always been this culture of, we got you, regardless. Like, there might not be a lot of people that look like you in this academy, but there are people had, that have come here at least for a workshop, that have come here for a one-year certificate, a two-year certificate that will help you along. Um, another cartoonist friend of mine, Chris Kinder, he has not come here, but there is this culture of black uh, illustrators and cartoonists and graphic designers looking out for each other because the spaces we are in don't look like us. Mm -hmm. So it is that added security and protection, not exactly from the institutions you're in, but from people who have walked through it and want to guide you through. So you don't have to go through the same mistakes they did, you know? Got it. Mm -hmm. um, and like, do you have to have like a, a degree before coming here? Like, is it an MFA program? Is it, uh, you know, a bachelor's program? Like, how does that work? It's a really good question. Yeah. Because um, it's the same exact curriculum. Depending on what you came with, you just leave out with something else. So I'm taking the MFA program, but I have an associate's. So I'm going to leave out with a certificate, even though I'm taking an MFA program. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whoa. But, but no, it's not any fault of the school. It's just how it's set up. So yeah. there's some kind of solace I get from knowing that regardless of what education I sought beforehand, I'm still learning on the same level of a master's program. Okay. You know, and 
it's beneficial if you want to end up teaching art to have an MFA. I currently don't really have a, a yearning to teach art, so I'm good with not having a master's, but it is like on the books and master's program. Got it. Yeah. How was the first, this is your first year, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. so how was the first year, like, you know, I don't know where you were before, but wherever you moved from, how has it been being like a cartoonist in this rural community um, from Maryland? Um, and, and, and what are, how have you found community? So <laughs> where I used to live, my hometown, is PG County. It's predominantly black county in Maryland. So I'm more, yeah, like the whole thing. So, but in full disclosure, I think growing up around black people made me kind of have blinders on to say, oh yeah, like I don't understand why it's necessary to have specific black collectives if, you know, we're always here. And it wasn't until I found out that we're not always here. You know, you have this image of what your environment is. Um, and then you go out a state away, two, three states away, and it does not look like that. Like my hometown was the anomaly of America. It doesn't look like that anywhere else. So having moved and having seen just how spaced out we all are, it really does make me appreciate the fact that we do need each other. We need to make sure that we're all getting paid, mm -hmm. you know, that everyone is taken care of because we can't necessarily rely on our environment to do that when our environment isn't always full of us, you know? And um, to the question about community, right? Mm -hmm. So you were in this like, I, I, I want to visit this town. <laughs> Please, I want to come. I want to come yeah. because I don't think I've ever been in a town. That Where was, are you from? I'm from Anderson, South Carolina. Um, wow. Yep. So upstate. Yeah. Uh, my on my dad's side of the family, they're from Charleston, mm -hmm. um, and um, I was the only one born in Anderson. Uh, all of my other siblings were born in Charleston. Um, as my folks moved. Um, when she got, my, my parents moved when they were pregnant with me um, and uh, grew up in Anderson, which is a really interesting town. I'm, I've been seeing lately how finally folks are starting to like organize and not be sort of passive in its approach to dismantle white supremacy um, and oppression. Um, and so people are now starting to be vocal about it instead of in this sort of like passive response to it. Um, so um, yeah, I grew up in Anderson and um, there's a black community, but like it, it's pretty integrated. Um, and in my art form and um, doing theater, I, I was around a lot of white folk. Yeah. Like a lot, so. Um, but so since you were in this like, gorgeous town in Maryland <laughs> that I'm going to visit at some point. Uh -huh. How did you find like a black community here or have you found a black community here? Well, <laughs> I just find, listen, well, when well, I first, what? well, like finish sentence. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I found you, you found me. That's I think the first two weeks or three weeks I moved here, yeah. I was at Peaceville Pies. And I can't remember how the conversation started. I don't know if I approached you or you approached me. But it basically dwindled down to like, I've never seen you here before, and I know every other black person here. <laughs> I'm having this thing set up, East High's table, you should come. Got it. Because you're a Gemini, and I, I know I. First of all, love to spare down a Taurus Gemini class. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> but like, I, I could spot a Gemini. Okay. Anyway, so, <laughs> so I came up to you and said. And it might be the East Coast mindset, but I, immediately I was like, I don't have any money for a ticket. Like, what do you want from this? And just to have you be like, oh no, like you're on the list. Like, I don't need to know you. You don't need to give me anything. Mm. To just have that openness, be like, oh no, like you can come. And the whole day I remember thinking like, if I get up to this list and I tell them, like, okay, it's a $50 fee. I'm like, I don't, there's nothing I, and it's like, you don't need to give anything. I think that was the first time since we've been here. We were like, I don't know you. I don't need to know you. Come to this thing, you know? So your openness really let me find that. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and what was the show? It was, it was Tuchai, the South Eat Men. Was it like the fundraiser? It was, no, it was the fundraiser, because I ended up seeing the actual play with, um... Eastside Table. Yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. it was the fundraiser, I remember that. Got it. Yeah, so they did like a snippet, I think, on the table, and like went over... That's right, yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Yeah, because we were in rehearsals for it. Yeah. We were in rehearsals. Um, yeah, so I, you know, a couple weeks ago, we, we hosted like this, um, 
sort of virtual healing space for Black folk. Um, and uh, Lily was on a call. The event is called um, Come As You Are. We're going to do another one uh, tomorrow for our uh, BIPOC community. So if you identify as um, Black, Indigenous, or person of color, uh, join us for this virtual healing um, session. But so Lily was on the um, at the Come As You Are event a couple of weeks ago, and the second part of that conversation is about refueling, right? Like, what are ways in which we can express joy? What are ways in which we can fuel each other? What are ways in which we can, you know, share some light, some, you know, words of encouragement? And um, I love what you have to say about, like, Black joy as, like, a form of, like, resistance, right? Because, you know, I think that um, our work in rural communities, right, in this moment right now is, like, really important. And I know oftentimes it can be I don't know. I, I feel disconnected at times because I, like, I'm not like in New York, which is where I lived before I moved to Water Rejection or in the South. And so, you know, how are we using, um, you know, our art and um, whatever practices we have to sort of use our joy as a form of, you know, um, approaching and being in conversation with this moment. So like, how, what is your practice right now to kind of, you know, use your joy yeah. as a form of resistance? Cause that is, that's needed right now. I actually practiced that yesterday because I, I just found all these like old Crayola pastel chalk things. Mm -hmm. And I just started like just scribbling and just drawing this really cute kid. Cause for me, it's like, it's impossible to feel angry or sad drawing a child. So I was just like, I just want to draw a little bean. I just want to draw a kid smiling and feel happy. And I think, at least from like a visual uh, art standpoint, there's so much pressure on Black artists to draw pain. Like mm. the only way that you can like illustrate your story is for it to be a teachable moment and for you to like bury your soul and open old wounds so that people see you as a human being. And I think my version of finding joy in that is, I don't want it to be an obligation. So if I want to tell a story detailing struggle or racial issues, I'll do that. But also, maybe I want to make a story about a couple of like werewolves. And like, maybe I want to make a story about some people that run an RV and go on a cross-country trip. Like, it doesn't inherently have to be back to pain. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the iceberg doesn't have to be the tip of it is a fun story. And it always has to go back to educating someone about something else outside of that. So... Well, the answer my joy is just like making up fun stories and <laughs> like and if it bleeds in it bleeds in if it doesn't it doesn't but it's not feeling as if i need to do this because this is the kind of artist i am and i won't get looked at any other company right yeah. right yeah you said something about like um like if i want to draw I, I i think what i'm trying to get to is like how we decided to um use a different approach for the photo that will go with like the story with seven mm -hmm. days. And you just said something about, um, uh, oh God. Was it? It's like, I don't remember how the things are Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it, it didn't come back to me. It didn't come back to me, but it was something so beautiful about like how- I think I, it's, it's kind of like- About how you choose, go ahead, go ahead. I think it was something like, um, unless you put a face to it, you're not seen as a human being. Or something. Yes. Yeah, which is that's been an issue of mine. It's just every article about black people voicing where they're at right now has to come with a photo of them or a picture of them that's looking right. kind of like this. That's right. To humanize. To us. humanize it. And it's like there is nothing to humanize if you are already human. Why am I trying to convince someone of something that is inherent already? Yes. You know? Yes. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's, it. that's exactly what I was thinking. So yeah. um so we, you know, Seven Days like reached out to us mm -hmm. um, and asked, you know, whether or not they can take a photo, like, you know, to accompany this article that will get published. Yeah. And so when I reached out to you with that request, like you had like a, you're like, mm, and I, I was don't... thankful that you pulled it out of me because you're like, just say it, just say yeah. it. And I was like, I don't know. And you're like, no, just be honest. And it came out. So. Yeah. And so what, what was, what was that feeling? It felt really good to know that you were listening, that mm -hmm. it wasn't a, 
you know, sometimes someone asks a question, like, would you like this? And it's like, well, I know you want me to say I would. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not really like a reciprocal thing. But you were very open with saying, no, like, please tell me what you feel. So it felt good to be able to articulate. Um, I'm not even going to claim this is me. I'm not going to take this. My friend Naya, Naya Ferguson, my dad, um, told me once that, you know, she is afraid that we are National Geographic in that And it hit. Yeah, of just like feeling as if if you're not taking a photo of you to put to the words you're saying, then people won't listen or people won't, you know, the heartstrings won't be pulled. But what you're saying is deserving enough to be heard regardless of there being with a sensational photo attached or like John Boyega crying while he's talking about these murders of like trans women and everything. It's like you don't need to see someone on the brink to know that what they're saying is impactful, you know. Yeah. Wow. That's Stan John Boyega. <laughs> that's that's really powerful. And so what was what's the alternative for this photo that you share with like how we're gonna go about using this photo for this conversation? So I I put out the possibility we could have like a silhouette kind of cut. So one of those like old school eighteen hundreds, like a profile, but it's just all black. But then you were like what if it's not just stark black? What if it was just deeply in shadow? Which I think looks better. It's a little more three-dimensional. So you know it's a person, but it doesn't matter what they look like. And also, if I can be completely frank, as if we're not recording, with the state of the world literally no hyperbole lynching people, I do not think it is wise to put your face out there to say, I think this. Mm. When you're in a predominantly white state, walking around mm. and easily identifiable. Because mm. On one hand, you speak for a mass majority, so it doesn't really matter how you look, but it's also a matter of safety, I feel like, you know? Mm. It's, it's a shame that we're at a point right now where it's like, you could say the most bare minimum thing, of like, I really don't think disabled people should be murdered. And that's enough to be like, you're being divisive, you're, you know what I mean? Right. So it's right. also about protection, I feel like. Yeah, no, that's, that's I, I have really, over the past couple of days, been meditating on that just from, us curating this conversation, like one about the photo, right? Because it's like in in my in my field, right? It, you know, social media, and like it's always about like you know how many people like are engaging with your work, and how are we visible, and you know, especially like creating this work and like going into our like fifth year, right? Like the work that I've been putting in, it's like yeah, no, I do want people to see it, right? I do it, that it is deserving of. Um, folks' attention, but like right now, it's like, but I don't know if my, you know, I don't know how much I, me needs to be attached mm -hmm. um, to some of these like conversations that are really, I, one, don't have this moment, like where I, I don't have a filter, like my demands are way different than they were before. Yeah. Like I won't take anything less than like what I desire yeah. and I need. So if I'm gonna be in conversation about some things that are really difficult, like there's no there's no moderate Jarvis yeah. in these conversations. So like I I I I'm grateful that you brought that to the table. Like that was something for me that I was like, oh shoot, like I I can learn from this. So thank you for it was helpful. Yeah, yeah, it was very helpful. Um, and also just like I'm I'm grateful that we were able to kind of have this conversation. Me too. <laughs> um, because like so so this whole conversation, um, we've been doing these jag talks, obviously, and um I nodded like I knew that. I did. <laughs> you didn't know? <laughs> no. I was just like, mm-hmm. You don't be following that stuff. Listen, <laughs> you're not me to set up. <laughs> Um, you know, we're the only black theater company and nah, nah, nah. it's a pandemic. I get it. Um, and we are six feet apart. Yes. Um, no, but like we're, we're quarantined. Like we, we being living in a remote is a state of quarantine. Like, it is. And also well, like, <laughs> I, I live alone, but also like, I know I live alone, but I know that I'm going to like quarantine down for two weeks just as like. I don't worry about myself getting sick, but yeah. like having older parents, I get so angry when I see people not taking it seriously. So like, yeah. no, I'm gonna see me for 
Yeah, after this. Yeah, but it's fine. I don't know. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Um, also, how this sort of collaboration came about, right? I, I, I want to kind of talk about that, which is like something really new. And I kind of, when people like want to reach out to write stories about Black folk in Vermont in this moment, mm -hmm. um, I think this is going to be the approach. So thank you for seven days for um, grappling with me and like, because I literally was just like, yeah, no, I don't want to have this conversation. I'm Thank you for your questions, but I am going to decline. And they're like, but wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I have another 20 minutes to spare. You know what I mean? Like, I just like, I finished eating a bowl of almond yogurt and granola with maple syrup and was feeling cute. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, so <laughs> yeah, and it was right. Like, you know? Um, and so um, I was like, well, you know. Obviously, there's been a lot, and I know you have questions for me too, so just oh, yeah, feel yeah, free yeah. to jump in with whatever. But so this moment right now, like I've been getting so many responses from cultural institutions, media outlets, like in the state of Vermont, about like, you know, how are we responding to this? How do we feel? Like, how do you feel? Like, what? Because you know, we put out a statement about um, the murder of George Floyd, and it was almost like our letter was gave people permission which is kind of to have a response. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then from that statement, I could, we got this flood of um, responses. So anyway, seven days reached out with some questions. I declined it. And then basically we got to this point. I'm like, if you, one, I want to know like what work is being done within this newspaper right now to, you know, work on being an anti racist, anti-Black um, organization? Yeah. Like, how, what, what are the practices? What are the values? Like, how are you working on, like, dismantling white supremacy within your own organization? And, like, two, like, how can you amplify, amplify the voices of, like, BIPOC Black um, voices within the state of Vermont before we can get to, you know, a collaboration? Yeah. Um, and so, the, you know, we agree that like, okay, instead of like us interviewing you, how about you interview someone um, that you admire and that you respect and that you um, want to amplify their voice. And so I was like, I have a perfect person. Like, I, like, I want to interview Lily. Um, and because seeing your face during the commissure of it reminded me that like, oh, you know, because we're so siloed in this pandemic, but I'm like, wait, we're here, yeah. you know? Um, and so I just think that like, when it comes to white cultural institutions that want to engage with black folk right mm -hmm. now, right? Instead of this band-aid approach, like just basically what I'm saying is like, step out of the way and let the people that are doing the work do it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so here we are. Here we are, and I I implore like anyone that is like you know creative or especially black people that need to respond to this moment or wanted them to respond to this moment like really set some boundaries on how you know we are engaging with cultural institutions that aren't black owned, black led, BIPOC owned, or BIPOC led. Um, before they decide to share their story or collaborate, et yeah. cetera. So I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Um you true. See, I'm not that much of a professional like Jarvis, so I have my written <laughs> but it's all like just like the moment. Yeah. Thank you. Um let's see which one, which one. They're this all one, really good. Thank you. This one I'm genuinely I want to know your answer for for myself. Yeah. Um, what ways do you honor emotions that aren't seen as like positive or inspirational for other people? Like, how do you honor the anger that you feel with all these things happening? Mm. I say, <laughs> um, 
I think right now how I honor that is that I have a board that is actively doing the work. One being, it's a POC, it's a, it's a combination of black folk, um, white folk, um, Indian folk, um, uh, Latinx folks. And so the leaders of the organization co-chairs a white woman and a black man um, and the treasurer is a white woman. And so that the work that they are doing on their own, right? And my, me being vocal about whiteness, like through my work, allows me to, in the ways in which we are engaging with each other, like to make this work happen, I'm very quick to remind them of moments where that whiteness It'll jump out. It'll jump out. It'll jump out. It will jump out. And I'm just like, and I know Jackie is watching, and I love Jackie Fisher, but there was something that we um, we were texting about yesterday. Jackie is my mentor, and I I, I love this woman. We were texting about something. Oh, yesterday, it was like an alt, like not an altercation, but like a, a discussion, a discussion <laughs> of, about, you know, a person on the board that I was, we were kind of snarky in a text about, and then she, that she was on the thread. And so she reached out to me and was like, why are you being snarky um, with this person? You know, this is a Black person. And I was like, pretty much like, this is Black folk business. Like, one, don't scold me. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Two, like this is between us, mm-hmm. right? Like, and I will happily and already have plans to. So, so how do I, you know, how do I express that? It's just like I have this board that like is mixed up a lot of people, and like particularly with like my co-chair who is doing the work. Like, I get to express that anger or that like that part of me like I, I, I get to I just do it yeah. like I, I, I get to do it um, and I also just I have a I have a really good so therapy that sounds lovely therapy <laughs> yeah um, therapy 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 and therapy is a luxury luckily I found therapist that is invested in my future and my life and you know does like sight and scale and like works with a lot of like artists um and I I I've I've been with her for the past like three years um so that is that is really important and my my family um I get to you know I have a my family down south, I, you know, we're on a family thread, sisters, brother, like, I, I talk to them quite a bit, so that's, that's another way how I, I, I get to sort of stress my anger. And, like, through social media, posting articles, and, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, that answers your question. It does. Yeah. It's really helpful. Beautiful. Because, especially knowing that, like, people in your circle, you can just express that, and just, you know. Yeah. It's personal, but also not personal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a duality. Yeah. They're like, oh, I've been on the other side of that sting. Just let, just so you know, you're powerful the more than you think. I'm like, oh, thank you for reflecting that back to me. Thank you. But yeah. I'm going to keep it moving. Yeah. What about you? Uh, how to express anger. I don't usually do this. I fell back into when necessary making bit art. And so, and this isn't like throwing anyone under the bus or any kind of practice. But for me, when I do bit art, I try to stay away from like symbols that have already been used more Mm. so. So I try to just do like a lot of like sweeping motions just to like get it out. I don't want to rely on, you know, this is what signifies anger. So I'm just going to draw this. It's it's less about how it looks and more about just like get it out. So that's been one, but more consistently it has just been like talking with friends back home and just like, uh, 
what is happening, what's going on. Um, and stay, knowing when to stay away from conversations when I know that I'm being petty. <laughs> yeah, like. Oh, I can't <laughs> listen. Yeah, that's another, <laughs> you're giving me another nugget. Yeah, because I, I know myself well enough to say, Lily, is this founded or is this you wanting an outlet? Could you mad about something else? <laughs> listen. <laughs> Guilty. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Sometimes you walk into a grocery store and one person looks at me. It's like they haven't done They're just looking. They're just using their eyes. But it's like I got 20 other things on my mind. You just want to take it out. You got to be real about that. But <laughs> that's alarmingly close. That's, yeah. 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 That's, that's really good. That's, that's really good. You had something else really interesting to. Um, and I, I, I want you to ask the question, but I'm more interested in you about like, you said something about like the, we talked about like the persona um, versus like, and I think we maybe said this yesterday, like the persona, like how do I protect my like emotional sort of capacity with like my persona self? Yeah. Like how am I like, yeah. uh, maybe that's this question, like how yeah. am I honoring, you know? Yeah, because that was what I was interested in you to talk about. But yeah, I, there's something about when you're in a position, you might have been positioned career-wise like you, but I feel like as a black person, there is this weight put on you of having to be the one to educate and to shelter people along to understand the strike they're going through. You know, other people have to read about it. Or some people have to read about it. So this is the problem about it, like that thing, you know? And so it's like having compassion while also realizing I'm not obligated to this. And me not being obligated does not mean that I don't want my people to succeed. It yeah. just means I cannot dedicate my life to making sure that this person gets it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's wild. It's like, and then you feel guilty at times because it's like, well, like, I didn't use my voice to make sure that person number 533 didn't understand. It's like, there are books. Like, there are books from people that have studied this, like scholars. Like, what? Just because I'm like, I don't know what I'm talking about half the time. Right. But, right. You know, right. I know about my very specific interests, and I can assume the rest. But, like, if you're looking at it from like an academic sense, I'm not an academic black person. Like, in terms of my race, I have lived experience, but I can't tell you, like, studies about it. Like, Angela Davis will help you out. Yes. <laughs> She's that, good for that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I went into that too with like donors, right? There's a lot, like in philanthropy, there's a lot of like, you know, 80% of our funding is like from like white folk, right? So it's like, oh, these folks are contributing to the success of the organization. And so like oftentimes, like being in these conversations, right? Like the balance of like how much I'm just gonna like allow some of these like painful conversations to happen, waiting for this hour to end and that check to be written. So, you know what I mean? So that like, it's like how much I'm gonna keep my mouth yeah. shut yeah. from the craziness yeah. that comes out or like how much I'm gonna be like, oh, well, you know. It's rough. Maybe, it, it's rough. It's rough. It's, it's rough. It's all situational. It's literally a lifetime of picking battles. That's right. That's what it is. That's right. That's right. I mean, and I know, like, there's something that I always talk about and I always say, like, freely, you know, like, I'm not, I don't do this work for white folk. Like, I just, like, I don't, you know, yes, white people, like, like, benefit from, like, the storytelling and, like, they donate, but, like, when I am thinking about, I'm not thinking about how I'm going to educate white people around this. I'm like, I'm, like, literally thinking about, like, what opportunities can be created for like black folk, like what new ways can we um, break down these like Western forms of like creating theater, like how can I liberate myself from these old like forms like, and like, you know, how can we create more like joy, you know, because it's just like the rage and the, 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 the animosity that we like carry in us, right? Like, what does that actually do to our insides and the way that we engage? So, like, right now, like, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly finding my joy again, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But 
my approach moving out of this is just like, yes, I'm going to keep fighting, but like, I'm also really focused on like my joy. Yeah. Because that's what's going to, that's what's going to sustain me and sustain us. So um, if you are interested in supporting or um, uh, collaborating or uh, commissioning this brilliant, brilliant person, um, uh, find the lilyharris.com. Yeah. Right. Close. Uh, yeah. LilyJHarris.com. It's Lily like L I L L I E, and that's across like Instagram, Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Venmo Cash App. Oh, uh, which yeah. is easy to put it in. Um, yeah. Cash App. Lily Harris. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Lily. No, let's get it. Thank right. you. We got time. No. 